are two wings who I think could be closer to the Knicks' wheelhouse at 11. You have Malachi Branham at Ohio State, Johnny Davis out of Wisconsin. You have Branham who finished the second half of the season quite efficiently. He finished uh, averaging 17 points a game, 53% from the field, 43% from three, 84% from the free throw line. You have Davis who's also operates very well out of the mid-range. Defensive dog. Didn't shoot so efficiently at, at a high usage rate. How do you see these two guys stacking up? I love Malachi. Like he was one of the guys that caught my eye with his second, you know, the second half of the year conference play. He kind of, you know, was put on the map. He's a he's a he's a Chris Middleton type of player. Well, that's the type of upside I see for him. You know, long arms, really good body. I mean, I mean great vertical as well. So that's something that you have to keep in mind in terms of his his shooting ability. You know, yeah, he shot 41% from three, 83% from the free throw line, as you mentioned. So clearly, you could tell he has a consistent shot. And the type of offense that they were able to run at Ohio State showcased those abilities. He's a really good ball handler. Yeah. And that's the type of guy that when you asked the earlier question about playmaking, he can be that guy to break down his defender with a couple seconds left on the shot clock, you know, when when everything else is breaking loose. So he's the type of guy that you can feel comfortable with giving the ball and that opportunity. Great mid range shooter. So, you know, a lot of people fall in love with the fact that he's a good three point shooter or excuse me, an, a great three point shooter. But he's a really good mid-range shooter. He can stop on a dime. He can elevate over his defender. He likes to attack the top foot of his defender. So he's smart. His his basketball acumen is is pretty up there. So he's not just going to try to create nothing from something. He likes to read the defense once they're in a half court set. That's what Ohio State did for a lot of the year with Zeb Key. You know, so that's the opportunities. Uh, those are the opportunities that he's going to give you. A, a really good, solid playmaker that can uh, create, you know, off the dribble. You know, the Knicks are going to, you know, see where teams did double team Julius or, you know, teams did push Julius out uh, more towards the wing and like, you know, had him create off of that. What is this kid going to give the team pure shooting and the ability to, you know, if you run him off the three point line, that's cool. I could shoot a mid range jump shot. I can stop on a dime. I can create and the handles are strong enough in which I can go inside the paint and play amongst the trees. So, as I said, he's the guy that I, I absolutely love his upside, and he reminds me of Chris Middleton. Good, good long body. With with, uh, with Davis, you know, a, a lot of people look at the, the high usage and, and inefficiency, didn't shoot it so well from three. Uh, but then there's a counter argument that says, well, he didn't really play with a talented supporting cast. He was relied on to, to really generate most of their offense. Um, again, had the ball in his hands a lot of times, took a lot of difficult shots, a lot of attention on him. H how do you see it? His, and, and I think his upside is like, he's a strong, heady guard. I mean, he put on a show in college basketball. I think that his thing is he's aggressive in the way he plays. He's a great rebounder, really good rebounding guard. Uh, you know, the numbers that he put up at the combine were pretty impressive. His, his ability to draw contact intrigues me, uh, but, but but yeah, I think him not having a supporting cast around him kind of hurt in, in terms of him showing more ability to play make. And, you know, he's not a point guard. I mean, he, he reminds me more of like a shooting guard that, you know, can play a little bit of point, but he won't be the answer that the Knicks need as a point guard. He can post up smaller guards. You know, he has a strong physical presence about him. But on the flip side, the mid-range jump shot, you know, it kind of concerns me where teams are going to have him stop. Because, you know, once you have him stop in one area and the ball's dead, the play's dead, mm -hmm. you know, you got to kick out and then we restart uh, as, as a team, I should say. That's something that kind of caught my eye with him. And towards the end of the year, yeah, he did, he did get burnt out. But I think that's just because of the fact that there was no one else to alleviate the scoring output that he needed to have. Overall, he's a smart player, made massive improvements from his freshman and sophomore year, which means that he's going to improve in the league with consistent player development. But if you're looking for a dude to just come in and plug in and play and, you know, fill in a role in the perimeter as a, you know, pure shooter or somebody that could help alleviate the pressure that Julius is going to face or RJ is going to face, 
he's not going to be that guy the first year, you know, and maybe even the second year. You're also looking at, you know, the other guys on the teams that are here. You know, Grimes has shown the ability to, you know, be the shooter that the team needs where it's going to be a shot clock. And he has a confident stroke. So how many shots he's going to face or get, excuse me, that's something that is kind of up in the air. I like him. He's going to be a very solid NBA player. But if you're looking for a guy to develop immediately here, uh, that's something that's up in the air.